of making the EV dress, the Descendants EV dress, from Descendants 2 is making the pattern. So what you first want to do is get a pattern that is very similar to the silhouette of the EV dress that you're trying to make. So I'm going to be altering this pattern, which is 6447 from New Look, and I'm actually changing Style B. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Yeah, okay. So Style B is what we're going to be changing because it's already a short sleeve, it has a waistband, and it's got the skirt, the same kind of silhouette as the EV dress. So we're going to be changing the back and front bodice piece to have the one shoulder um, look to it. Um, and then extending the length of the skirt. So what you're going to need to, to alter the pattern is you're going to know you're going to need to have the person's measurements. So grab the person's measurements that you're making this dress for, whether it's for yourself or your child. Um, this is going to actually be a women's size 810. So we're actually making a size 16 for this dress. Um, because here for the 16, it says bust is going to be 38, waist 30, and hips 40. I'm probably going to just extend out the, sh the sides a little bit on my sides to be more like a 32 in the waist rather than a 30. Um, and my fabric is stretchy, so I have some give in there as well. But I do want to put in those extra couple inches in the waist just in case. So I'll be showing you guys how to change that on the waistband. Okay, so what you're going to do is establish what size you're going to need. Um, and here this is my sizing chart from when I do my online sales, so that's what I'm referencing here as well to make sure I have the right size. And so you always want to measure, 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 measure constantly. So you're going to need your pattern pieces for the front, the back, and the waistband front and back. Um, for this pattern, there's a there is a front and back waistband. This is the back waistband. This is the front waistband. This is my back bodice, and then this is my front bodice. My front bodice has a dart in it, so that helps accommodate for the bust. Um, okay, and then what you're going to need is some cardstock or some paper, just to make sure you can transfer everything over. You're going to need a sharpie. You're going to need some tape to glue it all, um, tape it all together, and then you're going to need your paper scissors. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make my pieces larger. here that says on the fold, I'm going to go ahead and keep that towards one straight edge. Okay. Make sure that stays down. If you have any pattern widths, you can use that. Use them at this time. Um, mine are somewhere around here. I'm not really sure where they are. <laughs> so I'm going to do for the waist down here, I'm going to do a size 18 instead of the 16. The length, I'm going to do it 16 because it's going to slowly grade into the size that I need. So I really wanted those couple extra inches right here at the um, side. Now it says the finished bust measurement for this here and on here, on your different pattern pieces it has this. For, for me, for the 16, the bust is 41 and a half inches. That's a, like thir three and a half inches of ease is a lot. So actually I'm just going to keep it with the 16 because that's a lot of ease. Three and a half inches is a lot of ease. You want to transfer all of your darts, all of your markings. You're going to want to transfer your dots, everything.
we go. Okay, so you're gonna do this. You're gonna do the same method to all of your pieces. So you're gonna do that for your front, your back, your, your waistbands and so on, and then cut them all out. Then I'm gonna show you what to do next. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how we are going to do the skirt, um, the skirt extension, okay? So on your pattern piece, there's these double lines right here in the middle. This double line means that's where you would cut the pattern piece and open it up to make it longer or shorter. Uh, we're not making it shorter, we're making it longer. But here's the thing right here. So this right here, we're not gonna use this piece here. We're actually gonna do a small slit on each side of the side seams um, or the back seam, depending how it lays out on the fabric. So I'll explain it later, but we're just gonna go straight down from here. So I'm gonna use this edge of my cardstock, my paper, to do the actual just putting it up against it. And then I'll show you how we're gonna shift it down. Now for this size, size 810 um, on women's, the height is approximately like 5'4", five, 5'7". Five, um, so I'm just gonna add 36 inches to this. I'm gonna go towards like 5'6", um, as a finished size. So all I'm doing right now is lining it up up here. I'm lining up my pattern piece up here against the edge. And then that's gonna be my straight line down, okay? So I'm gonna take a little tiny piece of tape and put this up here and kind of hold it down so it doesn't move on me, okay? So here's what we're going to do. So right here at this double line is where I'm going to stop and I'm going to move it down because right now the current measurement of the skirt is, and I'm measuring right here where that top notch is in case you guys are wondering. It's 25 and a quarter. So I need to add in about 11 inches to this, okay? To make it a full length, like to the ground kind of thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer over my size 16 from the very, very top. I'm gonna try to shift this down a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm not trying to move it, but then I have to move it. Notches. And you can repeat this for the front and the back. Okay. I'm stopping at that double line. Okay, right here, I'm stopping at that double, that double line. Okay. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking off the off the paper. Okay, take the tape off of it a little bit so it doesn't keep ripping every two seconds. Okay, and then I'm shifting it down by the 11 inches. So I, mark, I got right there to that double line, and then I'm just taking it down by 11 inches. So I'm going to take my tape and mark. Okay, so that's my 11 inches right there. So I'm going to make that double line match up right there at the 11 inches. Okay, so I'm going to go right there. Take this out of the way for just a second. Mark my 11 inches. Okay, so if you had to add only 10 inches or 8 inches, you make your little line where it's going to start up again. So that double line is going to be right there. You're going to match up the edge of the pattern piece again, flush with this piece. And then you're going to just continue on down like if you had not had, hadn't done anything different. So down to the 16. Okay, and I'm taking it right on down to the bottom, okay? This is incorporating an inch and a quarter seam allowance, okay? So you can see that. Now you just have to connect from here to here. So for that, you can just use a roller. Nope, no big deal. Oh. 
there we go, down here, down here. Now, if you wanted to have this kind of flare out a little bit, you could. You could take it out and flare it if you want to, just a little bit of an angle. Have it flare out. I'm going to do that with mine because it kind of tapered in a little bit, like the bottom of the bottom of the skirt piece kind of did on the pattern piece because it was like a pencil skirt and this isn't quite, quite like a pencil skirt. This is this is a, lot, a little bit like an A-line. Not quite an A-line all the way, but a little bit, but it's not quite pencil skirt either. So I just flared it out just a little bit towards the bottom. If you want it more, you can do more right here. You can flare it out as much as you want to if you're doing anything different. But for the EV dress, just a little bit of a flare. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and mark this as my back. 8, 10. Okay, right here, this this second notch is the one I'm going to be actually using. That's your notch for your um, that's the notch you'll be using to stop your zipper. So that's the end of your zipper. It's going to be right there at that notch. Okay. So I hope you guys can see that. I think you guys can see that okay. Okay. We'll go ahead and do the front piece. Do the same thing to the front piece. And then I'm going to show you how to lay it out on the fabric. Um, and change it to a one shoulder. So here we go. So you can see it. So my salvage ends are actually up here. And it's folded lengthwise, the, the longest width, width of the fabric. So usually, if you have a yard of fabric, you'd have to fold it with, with the salvage ends. Both ends come together versus one salvage end here and one salvage end over here. So they're, sep they're on separate ends. Usually they're together, but this time it's separate. This pattern actually calls that you can do it vertically or horizontally. Um, the structure of this fabric is really, well, it, I mean, it doesn't, doesn't really stretch more one way or the other. So I like this fabric because of that. It's really sturdy, so it's going to keep its shape. It's not going to lose a lot of, <clears throat> lose a lot of its shape. So what we're going to do first is, I like to lay, lay out my largest piece of pattern piece first. So I'm going to do my front skirt piece first, and then I'm going to shift it up. Okay, I'm going to shift all of it up. Then I'm going to do my bodice front and my front And then my front midrift. Uh, so that's the midrift. This is the front bodice. And then here is the skirt. So I'm going to trace around and I'm going to mark, mark, mark all of my notches and things like that. I'm going to start off with my tracing pencil. And I don't think you guys are going to really see that on camera. Yeah, you guys can't really see that on camera. So I'm going to have to just go ahead and use my Sharpie. Here is an important fact, guys. I'm using my Sharpie, but at no point in time, I'm just going to kind of put a couple of uh, pins in it, but at no point in time am I doing this on the right side of the fabric. So this fabric here, there really isn't a right or wrong side because the, the, the color of the fabric, those individual strands are all the same color. So there's no real right or wrong side to this fabric. But if there was on your end, Make sure you're doing all of your marking on the wrong side of the fabric. That's very important to note, okay? So, I'm going to make sure everything is good and lined up. I'm just holding my pattern piece with my hand as I'm going around and tracing it.
Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. So on my pattern piece itself, it's got these little dots right here. So what I did is I took a pin and I put it inside that center hole and I'm just, just pushing it around until I got a little tiny hole right there. So I'm going to see if I can show you guys what I mean. Like, you see the little tiny hole? Okay, that's what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and line my pattern piece back up to where it was. Okay, there we go. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Get a chance for that notch there. Get a chance for this notch right there. Then all I'm going to do is going to just slip. There's a little poke, a little poke in all those, and you can actually see little tiny dots on my pattern piece that I'm actually just going to just emphasize so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So hopefully you guys can see that. Let me see. Let's see if you can see it a little better. See those dots? Yep. See those dots? So now you can see all of my notches. All of my notches and everything. Okay, good. Let's see if I can get you guys back down. There we go. Okay, so now we have our front bodice piece, our midriff piece. I'm going to go ahead and pin it because I like to pin it before I cut anything out. I'm going to trace my um, skirt piece, not mark all my notches and so on like that, and then I'm going to show you guys how we're going to make the the front piece into a one sleeve. Okay, so now we're going to cut this um, front pattern piece out. I'm just going to follow along the black lines. There we go. Okay, so right here, see that little notch? And it's just a little slight snip. That's all it is. Just a really small snip that's inside the seam allowance. And that way you don't have to mark through the fabric. It's just a little snip. This armhole one isn't really necessary because we're not doing a sleeve. That's mostly for a sleeve, but I just went ahead and did it anyway. Okay. So now what we're going to do is transfer our dots. So what I'm going to do to transfer my dot is I'm going to take my pin, get a yellow pin, and stick right through from one side to the other. Okay? One side to the other with the top of the dart and the bottom of the dart. Then make a little dot. Okay. And that's how I transferred my dart from the front to the back. So now you can see in the back where my little dots are. You can kind of see where the dots are a little bit. Right there, right there, and then up there. Okay. Okay. So I have my very form curvy ruler, which is like a hip curve. I have my um, French curve, and then this is like a basic form ruler or something like that. So I'll leave um, a link on the description box below where you guys can get these rulers if you want to use them. They are in um, centimeters. Um, they're metric system. They're not in inches but they work for me so I don't really use them for measuring I just use them for using it for my shapes that I need so 
and either one of those three would work. So again, what we're trying to do here is if this was like, so this is like if it was facing me, it was on me. This is the right and this is the left. So this being the right and this being the left, the left is the one where the shoulder is going to stay and we're getting rid of the right hand. Okay. This is pretty side up. This is important. Okay. So I'm going to go from right here to right here on the shoulder. Okay. So right here from the shoulder to right here is where I'm going to make my curve. Not quite enough. I think it's going to be this one actually. Yep. There we go. So, what I'm pretty much wanting to do is that I'm not trying to manipulate it too much. What I'm trying to do is I'm connecting this point to this point without having to manipulate the ruler to touch each point. That's what's important about these rulers. Okay. There is my line. I'm not sure you guys can actually see it on camera, <laughs> but I know it's not really showing up, right? Right from here to here? Kind of, not really. Okay. When I cut it off, you'll see. So this was there, and now it's a one shoulder. It's that simple. Okay, so with the back piece, here's where things are going to be a little different, okay? With the back piece here, what I'm actually doing is taking this piece and folding it down, and I'm making it into... Um, Actually, I could just go ahead and cut that piece off because it's actually connected together right there. It just so happened to be connected there with the pattern piece. Okay, and I'm going to show you how we're going to use this piece in just a second. Don't get rid of this. So with your back piece, okay, be right back on this so you can. Yay! Back piece. Okay. So with your back piece, you're going to have it on the fold. Okay. And so right here is where we're going to go ahead and trace it out. Okay. I have made this change on the pattern from where I used to have it that this all used to be connected because. I would get so confused about which shoulder would go to what shoulder and so on and so forth. So this way, the piece actually ends up being, this is where the zipper is, this is where the side seam is, this is the bottom, this is the top. It makes things so much easier just to insert the strap piece that I'm going to help you guys make here in a second right on, right into it. So it's just no, no big deal, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and trace out our piece. Now, Remember that this already had a seam allowance right there. We already had a seam allowance. On our mid back. So we don't have to add anything. It's already including the seam allowance for the zipper. I'm sorry, you guys are probably asking, well, seam allowance for what? The zipper. So the visible zipper is going to go right over here. There is our back piece. And then now what we're going to do is cut it out. Back piece. Okay. Now I'm going to keep a pin with this piece and put it aside. Okay. So don't forget about this piece here because this is very important. Okay. This, this piece is important. Now, the reason this piece is important because it's going to tell us the length we need to make our strap that's going to connect to the left shoulder and the width of that strap. Okay. 
Let's take these pieces apart. Somewhere else. Okay, and I'm just going to grab a scrap piece of fabric that I had left over. And I'm going to take this piece here and put it down. Okay. So all I'm worried about is the length of it and it connecting down to the back. Okay. So you can technically just kind of cut out this whole piece and then have, but I didn't like the way it looked like that. I like it being just like a straight, about a straight thing. So I'm going to go ahead and make my notch. Start it and start it there. Okay. Take your ruler and see the length of it. So it's seven and a half inches long. Okay. So we're going to make sure that because this is con this is was already connecting up to the top piece, but it wasn't connecting down here, so I have to add in a half of five-eighths of an inch seam allowance um, right down here. So it's seven and a half, five-eighths right there. So that's the length of my strap. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring it right on down. Bring it down. It's going to be a little wider at the bottom. There we go. So there's our strap piece. So this is our shoulder strap piece for the back. If you are making this out of a fabric that frays, this fabric does not fray. As you can tell, look right here, you can't tell at all. Because I washed it, and it's very crinkly, just a little bit. Um, I washed and dried, pre-washed and dried all of my fabric before I cut into it and I make anything out of it. Because I want it to shrink before I make anything out of it. I don't want my customer coming home and washing their, their fabrics. And then they shrink on them, and then they can't use them again because it fit originally. But after they've washed it, they can't wash, they can't wear it anymore. So I pre-wash all of my fabric for my orders. So here is our back piece, and then this is the piece we're going to connect to the shoulder. So if we did this like this, put that like that, that connects in there. So right about there. See that? It's really neat. Hope you guys can see that on camera. Kind of. There we go. So see that? Left, right. You put your pretty side down over your fabric. So this is wrong side up. This would go on this side, pretty side to pretty side. Bam. That makes it a lot easier, just knowing that this goes here, pretty side stretching, and then this goes wherever the back piece is. You don't have to try to do any crazy thinking about that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put all of my front and back pieces together in one pile. Um, I'm going to put pretty side stretching now with my back pieces, and then kind of do like a little mark here at the bottom so I know that this is the wrong side. Okay, so now I've got all my pieces cut out. I've got my fronts, my backs, um, all my pieces cut out. And I'm going to show you how we are going to um, work with our overlay. Okay, so I had started this and I didn't even finish my thought. <laughs> my mind goes everywhere. But if you are using fabric that is not, this is the top of the shoulder, so at the bottom, it kind of goes like that. And it connects down in there. So it kind of it connects right up in here. And it goes through there. It's kind of it looks more like it could go like that. There you go. Okay. So that's that piece right there. Now looking at it with the length, it's obviously not as long as this. So I'm not sure why this piece would be shorter, but it is. So just grab another scrap piece and we're gonna need to extend this to both sides. 
Don't ever get rid of your scrap pieces. You need them. You never know when you're going to need them for something. Because. I forget about these little details sometimes. Okay, so take this piece. I'm going to fold it in half because you actually need two pieces for this. And it's almost like making a facing, but not quite because you're not actually making a facing. I'm retracing it to follow that same curve, but just longer. People always ask me, how do you know how to do that? I'm like, I don't know, really. I mean, I've been doing it for so long that I just I just knew how to do it. All right, I'm going to cut it out. So you are going to need two pieces for this. And if you have a, a thinner lining fabric, it's good to have it. Um, but if you don't, that's all right. Just use this two of the same fabric. You're going to need two pieces of that shoulder piece as well. And it needs to be backed by something. So there is like that. And then there's that piece that connects. I hope you guys understand what I'm talking about when I say that that's that connector piece right there. Okay. You need this as well. So keep that in mind. Okay. So now that we have everything cut out, fingers crossed. Um, all right, let's go ahead and do our overlay. So lay out our overlay nice and flat. Mine's wanting to go down because the camera is right there. <laughs> and I usually have a chair holding my fabric, but that's okay. All right, single layer. I'm going to kind of work right here so you guys can see that this is a single layer. This is my quarter. Um, there we go. And we're going to put our front piece on. Remember, pretty side down. So if this is the side you had all your markings with your notches and your dots for your darts, that's what you want facing up towards you. And then you're going to want to lay this down. It's kind of slinky, so just be careful with it. You want it nice and flat. Okay? Nice and flat. Then you're going to pin it. I do not cut anything yet. Repeat, I do not cut anything yet. I want to make sure I have enough of my overlay for everything before I cut anything out. Because I have, after I actually pin this, I actually hand base this down all the way around so nothing shifts, nothing moves. Okay. So for this piece, that shoulder piece, we only need one. We only need one. Right down there. Don't stretch the fabric. Don't stretch the overlay to go, oh, let's just stretch this up. Don't do that. Okay? Don't do that. It's a big no-no. Okay. So your back pieces, you have two pieces for your back, so you're going to need to use that as well. Back piece. Back piece. Remember, pretty side facing up. I'm sorry, wrong side facing up. So this is my wrong side because I remember I marked it. And then this is also my wrong side because I remembered I marked it. If you put these next to each other, they're going to be mirrored images. That's what's important. When you're putting these two back pieces down, put it right up here. Okay. When you put your two back pieces, they're mirrored images, meaning there's a left and there's a right. That's important. See that? There's going to be a left and there's going to be a right. And pin it down. 
You do the same thing with your strap piece, your front and back skirt pieces. They will not be on the fold. They will be singular. Okay, that's important. This is my strap piece. Wrong side facing up. Actually, I think I'm going to put that right over here. And I'll do my skirt pieces down there. So now that we've done that, now we're going to go ahead and continue um, doing this for all of our pieces. So here is our midriff piece. Okay, so here is a very important note. On the ones that I make, I do not put the overlay on my midriff pieces. I do not do that because it gives it that little bit of contrast that this one here gives a little bit more of like a shimmer to it, and this is not. So you don't have to put your midriff piece down, okay? Now you got your back strap piece, your front, your back pieces, your front piece. Then you're going to lay down your. Okay, so I'm going to start basting right here, and then I'm going to show you what to do with it. I'm just doing a single threaded needle, so that means it's just through once, okay, with a knot. So you're just going to go in and out, doing a long running stitch all the way around. And that's how I do my hand basting. Just doing that running stitch like that. Okay. Again, you want to make sure everything stays kind of, kind of nice and flat so the slinky fabric isn't doing anything crazy. If you ever have trouble cutting out fabric because it's very slippery or slinky um, or it's just not sitting still while you're trying to cut it, put the pattern piece down on top of it um, and hand baste it down and then cut. Um, and a lot of times what you're actually going to need to do is you're going to need to do that with muslin. So you'll need to transfer your pattern piece onto a piece of muslin and then use the piece of muslin as your pattern piece to just hand base everything in. It is time consuming but it is well worth it because you get a nice clean product when you're done. So this dress doesn't have as many layers as the mal dress. Um, and the mal dress for descendants too has lots of organza and tulle and um, it also has a stretch satin in it as well. So but the organza on that one is not as bad to cut out because I'm doing it out of a circle and it's actually keeping the raw edges down and I'm doing fire effect at the bottom of it. So it's not like having to be as precise as this one. So it has lots and lots of more, it has lots and lots of layers, but it's really not as time consuming as this one. Especially when you're having to hand base in all of the pattern pieces. Hopefully you guys can see. There we go. Put you back in, in view. Okay. And I'm going to continue hand basting all of my pieces down, all the way around, and then I'm going to show you guys how it looks before we cut it all out. Okay, so now I have finished hand basting all around all of my front bodice piece, that neck piece right here, my two back pieces, and my shoulder piece. So now that I've got everything hand basted in, okay, now I can start kind of fussy cutting around the fabric so that I can um, take it off of 
the overlay, the slinky fabric. Okay, good. So that's what it's going to look like with the right side up. Right side up. Right side up. And then I'm going to do this piece. the dart on the sewing machine. You're going to want to have a matching thread with this. And um, just as a quick little pointer, with my skirt pieces, I did not hand baste in the overlay because it's actually not one piece. It's two separate pieces. So I did not hand baste in my skirt pieces to the overlay. It's actually going to act as two separate pieces instead of one continuous piece like this is all one piece. When I make it put it together, this is now one piece, not two pieces. But for the skirt, it's going to be two pieces because I want my overlay to be a little larger than the actual piece because I want to gather it and kind of like make it look rouged a little bit in the front and the back. It kind of gives a little bit tech, more texture to it. So um, I like that. I like that rather than just looking just straight down. I like having a little rouging in there. Okay, so for this part to do the overlay with the front and back pieces, really what we're doing is just a big rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my front piece of my skirt piece, and I'm just going to lay it right over. Okay? I'm just going to lay it right over it. And all I'm really wanting to do is just make sure that I have enough on the sides that when I rouge it all in it'll give it a nice texture um, so I do want to straighten up this cut here and then just add in a couple inches down here to cut straight across with this piece I also make sure that I leave enough room that if I need to cut off some more to make it even later on after this the dress is made that I can do that so I'm straightening up this cut here All the way over okay and then I'm going to um, I'm not going to cut this piece here because I just want it to be one seam in the back I don't want any seams on the side the less seams you have with this type of slinky material the better so you don't want to do that I'm going to give a generous seam allowance down here Okay, 
and then on the side, okay, I'm just going to move this over just a tiny bit. And right here, as you can see, it's not even. <coughs> I'm just going to cut it even right here. And I'm getting rid of the salvage. Okay, so that's how you cut the front and back piece to your overlay, your ED dress.